uh, actually whenever i uh, most of the time my meditation is good uh, but uh, there is concern about you uh, my daughter she is in class 10 and it's an important year for her to achieve and uh, i feel she is not listening to me uh, she should study uh, somehow i am really uh, uh, really messed up confused how should i deal with my daughter uh, so that is my state of mind i feel disturbed when i think about her how she will make her future the study uh, and then now uh, i i lose the uh, whatever uh, peace i achieved through meditation i'm sorry this is out of track question but uh, i really need the uh, solution for this hmm. i mean what how i should uh, what should be my well, behavior how old first of all how old is your daughter she is uh, she'll be 15 years now class 10th 15 she's 15 okay yes yes when you're meditating that's what you have to be doing nothing else okay and what okay. you're doing what you're doing is i'm going to go back in here a second and make this guy disappear what you're doing is you are here and you're sitting and you're meditating well i'm going to do it this do it the old way let's do it the old way okay whoops you're sitting here and you're meditating and you're working with whatever your object your object um of meditation your object of meditation and your brain your brain is still producing thoughts you see and your thoughts it's okay no matter what it produces while you're practicing you let your brain produce thoughts there's nothing in the dhamma that says we're supposed to stop your brain from producing thoughts then all of a sudden a thought of your daughter comes up there it is <laughs> You know, I had five kids so I can sympathize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had five kids in the house for about 7 years or 7 or 8 years. Anyway, here what happened is now you're thinking about this thought. That's where your your observation is going. The moment that you feel yourself pulled over to your daughter, you're not going to help your daughter while you're in meditation. you're not going to come up with ideas to solve things with your daughter during meditation the best thing for you to do is to de develop your meditation so your mind is very stable and very strong and you can look at things uh, and the problem the problem parents face with kids growing up today there's so much distraction so much distraction mm -hmm. everywhere okay Yes. So I don't know how you're operating your house, but uh restrictions on the digital thing, they need there needs to be restrictions on the amount of of computer time, the amount of digital phones and everything going on when you're going through high school, you know, if you're going to get good grades. But right. the thing is it's not at at 15 she's determining her life you know she's she's already starting to determine her direction in her mind and her life and i don't know how you run your house i'm not sure okay but when you're pulled over to think about your daughter here then you're not doing your daughter any good and you're not doing your practice any good okay and when you're okay. practicing your and developing your meditation you should be coming out clearer in your mind when something is going on and you can practice with your daughter by using the four noble truths and if there's an issue between you and your daughter in the house you can each take a piece of paper fold it in half like this This is the first noble truth and you say you know you take your paper and she takes hers this is the second noble truth and on the other side here is the other side this is the third one you use the four noble truths 
as a peaceful reconciliation so that you can work to be together better in the house. And the thing is, when you want her to do something, well, for instance, if you want her to do something, you play the magic manager game, you know, you give her three compliments and then you ask her to, to change one thing every time you speak to her. That's number one. What's happening now is she's getting older, you know, and and she doesn't want to be bossed around, right? And if you want to help to help the situation, first you have to be a listener and you have to get her to understand that you're what you want to have happen is for the, her best interest, but she needs to understand that you're going to work together with her. And if you haven't established it already at 15, it's going to be a little rough, but you have to be patient. Okay. And setting up this kind of thing where you take the paper and you, you fold these, these papers on the first side, you write what you think the challenge is. The challenge is the suffering. Okay. This is what I'm showing you. The challenge that's what do I think the suffering in the household is? What does she think the suffering in the household is? That not suffering, but the challenge to getting along, okay? What is the difficulty? And you don't, don't criticize, just criticize each other like it's all mom's fault and, and, and you say, well, it's all her fault. No, really talk about what you think the challenge is. You write down that here, and then she writes it down on her piece of paper. The second noble truth is the cause. What do you think the cause of this happening, the cause of this is in, in this household? Now, if she's pretty bright, she's going to write down, you know, well, because I'm going through a tough time and I'm a teenager now, and 15 is hard, Thir you know, from 13 to 16 about is really hard, okay, because... Like they don't have permission to do a lot of stuff yet, you know, and they want mm -hmm. to be, they want everybody to think they're ready to do this, that, and the other, but they don't, they're not really ready, you know, but working it this way, you put the challenge down, then you put what you think the cause is, then you put what you think the solution is, okay? Are there mm -hmm. any other children in the house or is she an only child? Sorry? Is there, is she an only child? She's just one child or? Okay, uh, she's, she's elder one and the younger one is uh, uh, 10 years. Okay, so there's another one 10 years. Well, the one, the one who's 10 years can actually sit at the table and do this with you too. Anybody? Yeah, she, uh, yeah, yeah yes. yes, write, what yes they think, write what they think they can write, but it's private. You know, it's each, each person writes down what they think the challenge is in the house. And then what do they think the cause of the friction? You know, like when we don't get along, why? Usually at mm -hmm. 15, it's because I want to go with my friends and because mom wants me to clean my room. <laughs> right, right. Perfect. Okay. And you want, I'll give you a situation in Florida. The mom came to me. She says, I don't know what to do. Here's what happened. And she said, the daughter was sitting right beside her and she explained it. And she's saying, yep, that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> and so what she explained was she was planning to go to the mall with her friends to buy a pair of shoes. And her mother, they had, she had set up the thing and her mother came and said, I need you to clean your room before you leave because your grandmother's coming over for tea. And she didn't want to do that. She wanted to go with her friends. And so there was this big thing. And so what we, we figured out was this was unreasonable for mom and it was unreasonable for her, but she, it was like you had to compromise, compromise. So how about this? Mm -hmm. If you spend five minutes to help mom clean the living room and the kitchen, and she spends five minutes to help you clean up your room, and then you go to the mall, and then she can have tea with the grandmother, and the house looks okay. And and she said, oh, yeah, it's not a bad idea. So you work together. You're all in this together. If you're in a family, you're in this together. And then mm -hmm. beyond this, you're in the community together. You see? So you work together in a community, like, for instance, sometimes you go in India, you have a clean neighborhood, and sometimes you have a really dirty neighborhood, and nobody wants to be the one that's going to go out and clean up the mess. Yeah, but nobody's asking you to go out and clean up the whole mess. If everybody cleaned up the mess right in front of their house, they'd have a clean neighborhood, right? Okay. Right. This is like cooperation, and cooperation, what you have to do is be 
be letting her know this is, it's not like do this, this is for your own good. That doesn't work, okay? But, you know, um, and she's a little old for the one where the younger, even the younger one is a little bit old, but when they're really small, you can say, uh, I need you to go to bed now. Now you can go up and go straight to bed, or you can have five minutes of a story and go to bed, or you can play with me on the floor for five minutes and then go to bed. By golly, you're going to get this one to go to bed. <laughs> so she gets to choose which way she's going to go to bed, but she's going to go to bed because you want them to go to bed. Do you see what I just did? I, I didn't <laughs> take the power away from the children. I made them yeah. choose which way they wanted to go to bed, but I wanted everybody in bed in five minutes. See? <laughs> Excellent. Yes tricky thing. <laughs> okay, this way, you're letting her see you, she is, you are willing to listen to what is going on in this house. You can do this with, I have houses where I'm counseling people where the whole family decided because of COVID, and it's a big family, they were all going to come to the biggest house and all stay together. Crazy. And these are aunts and uncles trying to live together. And, you know, they don't think the same way or run their house the same way but they're trying to do this. And now they have an idea where everybody is looking at what is important. What was, what does each person think the challenge in the house is? And what does each person think the cause is? And what does each person think the best solution would be? And then when the two kids write their stuff down, if dad is willing to do this, he should do it too. And then you guys take the papers and this is how you do it you come back and you you write down what you think the best solution is here's the solution the parents write down and if you really want this to work each person has to see part of this solution is their idea you understand what i'm saying right right yes every their what they were trying to contribute as a solution part of it has to be in your solution and then you say okay this is what we're going to try and we're going to try it for a week or two let's everybody try this way and everybody agrees to it now how should we try it and this is where you come out and you you um you come out and you say okay we're going to try it but when we try it we are going to do it according to the Eightfold Path. And they go, oh boy, what are they talking about now? <laughs> you know, and then you put the Eightfold Path here, you put the Eightfold Path, and uh, you end up that they have to abide by this Eightfold Path, and they have to keep their precepts. Okay? That's what they have to do. It's not, it's no big deal, right? First of all, they have to have an impersonal perspective not be selfish, okay? They have to think of other people in the house. So this is an impersonal, impersonal, um, impersonal uh, perspective or view, a perspective. So they don't just think of themselves. They live in a house with four people. They have to think of everybody when yes. they decide to do something, right? The second one, Yes. So you have perspective. The second one is image. They have to have a, a harmonious. Let's use the word harmonious. Harmony is okay. where everything works together the right way. So you have a harmonious um, hmm. images, an image, harmonious thoughts in your mind. You don't think bad things about people. You don't think ugly things or dangerous things. You think harmo You keep harmonious images in your mind, right? So that's perspective right. in your image. The next one is communication. Communication. That means mm -hmm. you don't go around yelling at your, your sister or your brother with your arm on your hip saying, I don't care. I want to do it this way. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's harmonious. Communication is considerate of everything. It's kind speech and kind movement of the body. And don't kick the other person or go, well, do, 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 do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you'd be fun. Mm -hmm. okay, then, yeah, harmony. Let's see, first way, pick them. Okay, the one, uh, this one is movement of mind's attention. Where should your attention be all the time when you're doing anything in life? On what you're doing in the present time. 
Don't be thinking about the past or thinking about where you have to be in 20 minutes. Just be here now, get the task done, and then go. And you have to be considerate when they have a schedule. They have to be considerate when you have a schedule. Yeah? It's respecting right. each other. It's lovingly respecting each other. Okay? But it's, and it's, it's taking care of each other. This is lifestyle. The lifestyle is everybody tries to keep the house clean and it keeps it pretty neat, you know, so that people are comfortable when they come home from work. You keep your stuff in your room or under your bed in a box or a trunk, or whatever, okay? Yeah. And then, um, so this is your practice. And when we're talking about this practice, we're talking about right effort. We use it all the time. And I call it the never mind game. Okay? This is a never mind game. So when you feel like you want to get mad at me next time, you stop for a minute, close your eyes, and just laugh at yourself because it grabbed you. You want to get mad at mom, and you just say, never mind. And you let go, okay. relax, you smile, and you come back. You got it? You never mind. Okay. You let go. Relax. Smile and come back. And you be and then you be kind. You be kind in everything you do to the people, to the dog, to the bird, to everybody. Practice. Okay, then this one is observation. Observation. Are you observing? This is your observation is mindfulness. Observing how you're dealing with one thing at a time. Are, are her grades okay at school? Yeah, yeah, yes, she's in class 10 in school. Okay. And now so, it's uh, online teaching. But are her grades okay with what she's doing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's in class 10 and the study is study and study. I, we are behind her. But she should study. That is the only motto currently. Be very careful she doesn't study too much and not play at all. Be very careful of this because you're, asked, you're you're too much time on the computer and then she ends up with headaches. Is she sleeping? How many hours yeah. a is she sleeping? Yeah, she's, she's sleeping eight hours. She play for three hours. That's what we are worried. She's in class 10 and she's not giving much time for study. So that's the fight uh, arguments happen over there. Is this playing games or something online? Uh, no, no. She go out for playing badminton or uh, some uh, uh, running uh, with her friends. She's having her group of friends so much attached uh, with her friends. She just want to be with them or even uh, at home also she want to be online chatting with them. So that's how uh, so much of attention to friends and not to study. So we are worried for that. But I'm going to follow the eight. If her, grade, if her grades are up, then she's keeping her end of the bargain, but she has to be helping at home too and her environment and her community. It's not just about totally going out with friends. There has to be, right. as a family, deciding how everybody has chores. I mean, my, my littlest one had her own apron and her own little tools to help me in the kitchen and clean the house and everything else when I was when she was really little you know she had her own had to have oh. her own room and her own mop and everything so she could do everything <laughs> and then she had to help oh, nice. me help me in the garden and everything so from you know like eight years old and up they should have a set of chores when they come home from school they mm -hmm. put some time into the house and then I don't nice. know how, uh, yeah. I don't know when is really good she, she do practice, she's into, she's listening to Dhamma and she's like, we keep on sharing so many stories and about uh, Buddha and she's so, so much into things. I mean, she, she follow the way, I mean, I, I, I really appreciate her help. But the elder one is, uh, uh, don't feel that, uh, I, I'm feeling really worried about her future, how she will be doing. I feel she's not uh, taking any responsibility about her study. Na class 9, she did well, but 10th now her grades have come down. And uh, well, then is important. If her grades are down, then she needs, this needs to be pointed out to her. And just, you know, this is what you're doing. This is your job right now. This is like what yes, I, yes. my nieces and nephews was like, this is, this is your job right now until you go to work. School is your job. 
to to be pulling for the family, you know, and for yeah. everything. Okay, lifestyle practice observation um, and uh, concentration. All right, so this is collectedness. The last one is collectedness. You don't want her to concentrate um, too hard. If she gets her work done, then she can do some things. But I think maybe one thing you can do is look up the situation of spending too much time online on the internet. Find if she's 15, she's old enough to read some articles about what's happening with people. And it's like, we're, tr we're being tricked. We're being taken away from humanity, from each other, from working with people. And instead we're being pulled into working with digital stuff and on the internet with our friends all the time. This is not, it's not healthy. You see, right, right. But she has right. to see for herself what they're finding and reading if she'll do it. Is she interested in science? Oh, sorry? Is she interested in science, in psychology? That till now, it's not clear, actually. If she focuses, she does everything in all the subjects. But that is also not clear. We were talking today. Today, we had PTM also. The teacher was worried about her marks. Uh, that till now sometimes she does extremely good otherwise uh, her focus is not there uh, can I ask her to do some meditation I mean which meditation she, she should go about so I can make her sit with me so I have to make you that uh, actually. you can't get her to do loving kindness and whenever you guys have a spiff like any kind of argument or anything be sure that you do forgiveness with each other and you're sending loving kindness but you need to be working with the development of loving kindness Mm. Right. The thing is, if she's spending time on the internet and stuff to, well, it all depends. You know, if you want to sit down and do some breathing meditation just to calm down, that's one thing. But I would rather see her learn to do loving kindness and compassion where she can put that into the family in the relationships with everybody in the household. It works better. That's just my experience okay. with people, you know? Yes, I'll, I'll do that. But you know, I can tell her the story about the, I wish I had a bunch of teenagers I could teach because I have some neat stories about staying in the present time and working in the present time. So you give full attention to what you're doing just in the present time. And then the next present time is when you're on the phone with someone. The next present time is something else, but you have to do your schoolwork first because that's your job. Just the way dad has to go and do his job, or if you're working, you have to go and do your job. They have to look at their schoolwork and understand that in this, especially in the thing with COVID going on, that's their job and their contribution to the community and to the house and everything, to the family. It's just the way I look at it. This is my, my okay. thing. That is, that is very important point. Thank you so much. 